Hi, it's Mark P87 here with a brief overview of my solution to the question should it be two bikes or just one? Returning to motorcycles after many years I had a fairly firm idea of what I was looking for in my new ride and its equipment. Primary considerations were reliability. It had to be cheap to run with much longer service intervals than the average enduro bike not ridiculously heavy. It had to be able to be ridden on the local Shamans near my adopted French home, or capable of taking me back to the UK to go green laning with my brother, or indeed anywhere else in Europe I care to go a couple of times each year. As I'm short in the leg and getting on a bit in years, I expected to fall off a lot. So protecting the core machine was a requirement, even at the sacrifice of some additional weight. Light might be right, but I'd settle for lightish. As you can see, I have two fairly distinct parameters of use. One, local trail riding for up to a day, where keeping weight down is easier and more desirable. And two, the longer trips that require substantially more resources to be carried. But I didn't really want to purchase two bikes. For the longer trips, I wanted to be able to remove the panniers quickly for taking clothes, water, etc. into the cabin, on ferry crossings or hotels en route. I looked at strapping soft luggage and using internal dry bags for fast removal, but taking the whole pannier seemed more secure and I could get everything in and carry just one bag. For shorter trips, I wanted the bike, not me, to carry any weight like tools and water. Additionally, I wanted to be able to pop to the local shop and collect small items of shopping if required so a little spare luggage capacity was needed. I knew the crash bar bags would take a beating, so replacement prices were also important. I would say that personally, having searched all the major and minor brands, that I think a great deal of the adventure gear available, although it's of a good quality, it is way too expensive, and I really would need to go around the world several times to justify that kind of expense. The price of Lomo equipment, however, is incredibly realistic, so check them out if you haven't already. Okay, having rambled on a bit, this is the way I chose to fulfil my requirements. The bike, as you can see, is the 2021 AJP PR7. Having looked at all the options available at the time, and confirming with my partner I would be riding solo on the longer trips, the 2021 PR7 was an easy choice for me. They had addressed my last major concern with the bike when they updated the fuel injection system. Having cruised the forums for all the major brands, the responsiveness of AJP to design issues raised by customers appeared to be outstanding, and very few major issues had been experienced compared to some of the other offerings of more established brands. My tyre choice? Well, I had a pair of 5050 Dunlop Trailmax Mission tyres fitted, which after 3,000 kilometres are performing well, though I am still playing with tyre pressures to get the best out of the front in muddy conditions. As for protection, the engine and frame covers are by Thork, handguards by Barkbusters, crash bars by Crosspro, and the rear rack by the guys at Pamir Travel Systems. It's a solid, well-made piece of kit with an excellent standard of finish. For local use, up front I have a pair of Lomo medium panniers, 13 litres each as crash bar bags. I fixed a Givy T516 3 litre handlebar bag. It's not removable and has much faster access than the roll top option. This gives me 29 litres of forward storage. At the back, a Givy S250 toolbox and a Wolfman bottle holder with one and a half litre fuel container complete the on-bike storage. I also carry an SW Motec 30 litre collapsible backpack just in case. It takes a helmet if I'm on extended walks away from the bike or larger shopping items when required. The long ride gear sees the addition of the Givy GRT 709 Canyon side bags at 35 litres apiece, which give me the capacity and flexibility I was looking for. 
key match to the toolbox, I just need to carry the one key. Quick to mount and dismount, I wanted to keep the bike's profile as slim as possible, hence the pannier positioning. A second SW Motec 30 litre acts as a winter sleeping bag carrier. And finally, in a minor change to my original thinking, I now carry a 10 litre backpack with built in 2 litre water bladder and 6.5 watt solar panel for the camping situations. After riding for a few weeks, it also became apparent that there were a few further necessities. Carrying the spare fuel to allay my jitters caused by the seemingly erratic fuel gauge, adding the small wind deflector to the standard screen to reduce the wind buffeting, because although I'm short in the leg, I am tall in the saddle. I had to cave in and fit a torque racing drop link and bar risers, as even after adjusting the sag, I could barely reach the floor on level ground before the weight of the bike was too great to support. I also added the 180 degree mirror for better over the shoulder vision when pack riding. Having ridden the PR7 for six months, I have to say I am pleased with my choice. All in with spare fuel, tools, snacks and water, she weighs 195 kg for my local ride-in, which is still many tens of kilos under the starting weight of the majority of established dual sport and adventure bikes. As far as niggles go, the fuel gauge is my biggest gripe, though it's easily managed with mileage checking and some spare fuel. The clutch has judder when pulling off under stress, and the electrical connectors definitely need additional protection like silicone grease etc as their positioning leaves a lot of them exposed to water ingress. I am currently experimenting with a splash guard under the tower fairing as I dislike the ingress of so much dirty water into every crevice behind it. Also I've added some radiator guards which are working okay in the winter conditions but I need to see what the summer temperatures bring. In the near future I intend to change the clutch slave cylinder and update the lighting, both of which I now feel are a necessity, though I'm not quite sure yet which way to go with the lights. I hope my rundown was of some interest to you and helps you in some way with your choices. See you on the trails.